So here we are. The date is 1964, October. And Kajiwara is an eight dan, and probably at the peak of his career, which to us in this era sounds strange. For this next game that we see where he challenges Sakata Io for the Oza title, Kajiwara is 41 years old. And we tend to think of players peaking in their teens or their 20s. But this is the generation before those young geniuses really start to appear. Even if you go back to the uh, Edo Jidai, where you had people like Shusaku, who were geniuses and recognized as such when they were very young. I think Shusaku was found when he was nine years old. They weren't considered at their peak as a player until they started to mature. And so finally, we can look at Kajiwara's mature style, which we saw just a little bit of in his uh, handicap game against Gosegen. And I'm so excited because finally, finally we get to get into the real meat of who Kajiwara is. And we're going to start by talking about his style. And his style, as this uh, whole section might lead you to believe, is what I've labeled the nothing style. And also I'm going to label it as living go. And you are all rightfully sitting on the other side of this computer screen or phone screen going, what in the name of Shusaku is a style? And what does living go mean? There's there's stones and clamshells and wood, right? By definition, they're made of dead things. But don't worry, we're going to go through it piece by piece. Starting with style. You've probably heard of style. You've heard of, speaking of Shusaku, we've heard of the Shusaku style opening, the rotating three, four points. And when uh, white approaches your corner in the upper left, you play the world famous Shusaku diagonal. This is called Shusaku style. Shusaku was said to have a style that was balanced and also steady. He was a steady player. He was uh, not slow, but steady. You might also know Takimiya is famous for his uh, Sanrese, which leads to his cosmic style of Go, right? Or we also know uh, Cho Chikun is famous as a highly territorial player. He often started with three threes, two pair, uh, a pair of three threes. These are all examples of style, but what is style? So I'm going to give you a very basic definition. Style is how you personally feel like playing. It's not necessarily a move. So some people might say if you play the star point a lot that you have a high style. I'm not sure I agree with that reading. In my view of, of the in slightly individual way we all play the game of Go, your style is how you feel about responding to something. And so sometimes when people talk to me about the AI style, I get a little creeped out because I don't think the AI really has a style. I think we humans have personified the AI and given it one, but I'm not sure that I would say that it actually has one. Let me give you an example of how that would work. I have a Go club that I go to all the time. And I have uh, a player that I play against all the time. He's a, a Fordon. And my Go club has recently upgraded me to a Fordon as well. Uh, so we play even games. And I often like to play this rotating Komoku opening. Or I'll, if my opponent will play down here, I'll also play my Komokus facing each other. But this guy always plays the star's point in the upper left. Always. Always. And when I play down here, he always plays another star point. And I know his style because I've played him so many times. He responds when you approach a corner. I know he does. I've played him like 20 times now. So I don't need to enclose a corner yet. 
This has happened to us many times where I approach, he responds, I approach, he responds, I enclose a corner. This opening sequence that you see here, I have played against him so many times. And I know that he is going to play this way. This is his style. He, he responds. And he also likes to uh, trade. He likes to trade a lot. So I understand his style. And that's a, a, just a very simple example of how style can be a part of uh, the way you play people. Uh, especially in some place like Japan or China where these players, these professional players are playing each other all the time. They know each other's styles and they can sort of come up with game plans about how they're going to play these people. So going back a little bit to how we can organize styles. I like to think there are three broad areas of style. You have territorial players, influence oriented players, and players that like to fight. And within those three sections, there are many, 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 many different kinds of style. So for example, going back to uh, Takemiya and his famous Sanrese opening here, and then his crazy moyo style where he makes a big area in the middle and people have called it cosmic go, his cosmic style. He's a influence oriented player. And within that section, his own style is cosmic go. He's a very extreme example of the influence style. And then you have people like Shusaku or Chochikun or Honimbo Shua, uh, who were all going to be in the traditional Japanese style. And the traditional Japanese style is territory. Most of the traditional Japanese players or players in Japan, even now, are balanced territory players. Inside that area, we could say there are the calm response people like the Stone Buddha of Li Cheng Ho who no matter what anyone does, he will respond. We can say that he is a kind of territory player. He likes to win by one point, two points kind of thing. And then in the fighting styles, we have some really famous examples from Korea uh, because the Korean players have that crazy wild fighting style, most of them, right? So even within the fighting, there are very many variations on that. Nowadays, uh, there are lots of uh, fighting players based off of the AI complications. So hearing all this, you are all probably wondering, what about Kajiwara? Where is this nothing style going to come into play? And that's where it gets very, very interesting and why Kajiwara is such an interesting player. Because if Go Sagan was saying to the world, everything is available to you on the Go board, you can play star points, you can play the Tengen, you can play a star point Tengen uh, San San, everything is available to you on the board. So that would be my examination of Go Sagan. He was very broad minded, open minded. The board was open and there was everything available to him. And Kajiwara as I've compared these two before, because I think he was definitely influenced by Go Sagan, is on the opposite end of that same idea. He's not territory, he's not influence, he's not fighting, and he's not everything. He's none of them. He's nothing. And what this means is Kajiwara's living go is responding to what his opponents put on the board. Now at the time, uh, if Kajiwara holds black, we often see him play the 3-4, but he'll, he'll also sometimes go for the star point. But at Kajiwara's time, uh, the main theory of Go uh, opening strategy at that time was 3-4s are the way to start. Star points were still, they were, they were viable now. But most of the people still continuing the tradition of uh, Japanese Go 
we're still opening on three fours. So Kajiwara would, would often go for either one of these, but whichever one he chose if he was playing black, that continued to influence his strategy throughout the rest of the game. Kajiwara was unique in the fact that he took the idea of every stone you put down is a piece of you to the extreme. He took that idea to the extreme. And I'm going to give you a really quick, easy to understand example that exemplifies Kajiwara's nothing style living go. In this game that I'm going to show you, Kajiwara is black. He opens with a star stone. And his opponent played in the opposite corner at the 3-3. Now you are Kajiwada. You are sitting here going, I opened with a star point stone. My opponent responded with a 3-3. We're playing living go. We're not coming in with any preordained strategy. We're not saying to ourselves, well, I'm a territory-oriented player. Or I'm an influence-oriented player. Kajiwada is going to take the move he's played and build off of it in response to the move that his opponent has made. So put yourself in that mindset. Where do you play? There's a lot of options on the board, right? It's wide open still. There's the corner down here. There's the corner up here, right? Uh, if you want to be hyper modern, you could maybe even make a, an start making an enclosure from your star stone. And you have Mii, right? If white takes one corner, you take the other. But none of these are what Kajiwara chose. In Kajiwara's mind, he's looking at this board and he goes, I've opened with a star stone, which is more oriented toward the center of the board. My opponent has responded with a 3-3. Well, logically, I'm going to press him down. This was Kajiwara's living Go. He's playing the essence of Go. You're not playing to win, you're playing Go, man. That was how Kajiwara approached the game of Go. Every single game. Uh, there's a famous story of his pupil, Yoshida the Calculator. He uh, was reviewing a game with Kajiwara, who was his teacher, and he said to Kajiwara that oh, I just played a one space jump and I win by one point. And Kajiwara was very critical of that move. Very critical. He said, yeah, something to this effect. He said, yeah, you won, but at what cost? Moves like that just don't sit well with me. You're not pushing yourself. You're not f leaving it all out on the board. I'm sure that's something that some soccer players have heard before too, or some baseball players, right? Uh, leave it all out on the field, right? And we can do the same on the go board. That's what Kajiwara brought to the game. His idea of living go was leave it all out on the board. Did you push yourself to the edge? Did you push yourself and get every little bit of yourself out onto the board? Can you walk away from the game, win or lose, saying, I did everything. I saw everything and pushed and pushed and pushed. And yeah, maybe I lost, but I played go, goddammit. That's the Kajiwara style, the know-nothing style, the style of living go. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org, except there, You'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.